what kind of kid Kanti Maya was? This is the first question, everybody has this. Yes. Well, I was a very active kid. I think okay. if you ask my mom and my dad, um, they told me that I loved balls. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was sleeping with uh, three or four tennis balls when I was two years and uh, I was obsessed with balls everywhere. So uh, you could see I wanted to do sport with balls. <laughs> oh, your uh, father was a great handball player and now he's a great coach in a handball team in, in uh, French. And is this his uh, impression that, of course, you are playing handball now? Or uh, what was it uh, in your childhood that you made this decision to be a handball player? Well, of course, uh, he had a big impact of, uh, of this passion for handball. Uh, I was a uh, very young age in, uh, in all the arenas, in all the training centers, training arenas. Um, but I really had this, this feeling for uh, this, this handball and this big wish to produce the same uh, career that he has. And uh, I actually wanted to be better than him since an uh, early age. I always said that I want to play a national team and to be a uh, world champion. That's what I said when I was very young. It was my biggest dream. Mm -hmm. And so for sure he had a big impact, yes. Yeah. He has a bronze medal in, uh, in Olympic Games, as I know. And uh, you reached the gold medal. Uh, in the last Olympic Games in Tokyo, I think that, that's right. So you can, you could overtake your your father yeah. in this yeah, well, career. I'm, I'm so lucky actually to live this life and to live this dream. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't put words how grateful I am mm -hmm. to be able to to live this as a, as an athlete, to live this with my family, and uh, my father is definitely living a, a second career through through myself mm -hmm. and uh, I don't have to forget as well my mom who was so supportive and who had uh, another vision not only handball but lucky us we we had other stuff that she was taking care of and that made us what we are today and how was that uh, in your childhood so your father was a handball player that go uh, games and uh, training as like as you uh, here in West Prem. So uh, your child can live this life that you have been lived with your father. Yeah, sure. Uh, my kids are not so fascinated by by balls in general. Yeah. Um, they are but they, interested they are in for this. No? Yeah, but in this age, I was already focused and so. Uh -huh so crazy to, to be able to bounce the ball, to throw mm. the ball into the goal and stuff like that. Yeah. And they are not, but um, I take them, of course, uh, through this journey and I try to uh, share as many moments with them as possible. Um, and uh, the future will tell us what they, what they choose. Uh, after uh, Flensburg team, you signed for Vasprem here. And uh, come, which year you come here? So, what is? It was July 2018. 2018. So this is your fifth year in in Vasprem. Exactly. Yeah. It, was it a, a big change for you to move to Hungary after after Germany or after Flensburg team to join Vasprem or how, or how was it at that period? To be honest, it was a dream come true uh, to play in such a big club and to play the first role every every season. Mm -hmm. um, so, sportly speaking, it was, it was a big change mm -hmm. and uh, outside of handball, outside of the court as well. Um, we still have a lot of uh, friends in Flensburg that we used to visit every summer. And so, uh, we have a great connection to the city and to the people there. Mm -hmm. So, it was uh, not uh, that easy to move away from there. But, uh, sportly speaking, and all the conditions that I, you know, that are, uh, possible or the conditions that we have here in this club in Vesprim is, is just one of the best, so it was definitely the right decision. Okay, and uh, how could you see the Hungarian life here first when you came here? That, like the dishes, the <coughs> pe people here, like the mood of the people, so I was thinking about this. 
Well, mm, it was not, I, I said like outside of the court, it was not that easy to adapt mm -hmm. because uh, there was this language barrier that was a little bit tricky. Yeah. Um, with the time I learned a few Hungarian words that help in the daily life. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, uh, you are a little bit isolated if you don't speak Hungarian. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but this is the normal, uh, you know, the normal procedure that you have to adapt to mm -hmm. the area and the, the city and the country that you come to. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think that it's always nice to adapt and to, to find a way how to, to manage the, the daily life outside of the court mm -hmm. the best possible. What was the strangest thing that you feel in Hungary first? Uh, your restaurants are closing very early yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the night. Uh -huh. uh, compared to French restaurants, for example, that are open uh, a little bit longer. Uh, and also that uh, some bakeries, this was actually the biggest surprise, that bakeries here sometimes are closed on Sundays and on Mondays. And with Sundays it's a little bit strange because it's, it's the day of brunch where you stand up and you will pick up some bread or some croissant, or some pain chocolat or some, some stuff yeah. and bring home to have this brunch with the family. And, Sometimes it's just not possible here, uh -huh. so you have to to think a little bit in forward and to go and uh -huh. to buy stuff on Saturdays. <laughs> oh, great! Could you find some taste of French here in in Westprim or or in or in Hungary, for example, a bakery or a restaurant or or a French friend here? Because uh, some people speak a little bit French here in in Westprim. We have some secondary class like French class in. in well, Vatish, in my first season, I, I visited one uh, college. Uh, one gymnasium here uh, in one class who uh, had all the classes, um, I mean history and mathematics I think and, and French of course, yeah. all in French language yeah. and the kids they were speaking perfectly French, I was yeah. completely amazed, it was a really nice yeah. um, experience. I also got in touch now with uh, the embassy, the French embassy in, in Budapest more yeah. and more. Um, they invited me uh, to make a celebration after the Olympic gold medal and also now during this um, week of Olympic and Paralympic week, mm -hmm. uh, the preparation, it was all over France that they had a, a week of, um, you know, to to let the kids discover this, this sports, the different mm -hmm. sports in Olympics, so they asked me to to come, I couldn't come, but I made a, a Visio conference mm -hmm. with uh, Estelle Enziminko from Gyur. She also uh, uh, had an hour or two in Visio conference with them, and I, I talked to the to the kids there. It was it was really nice, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, also here in Vesprim or next to Vesprim, there is I think this uh, company Veolia, right? What was Veolia, that? I think it's called. I don't know. Uh, it's a French company. Yep. Like I think it's. Uh, they are working in the energy uh -huh. business or something, I'm not pretty sure. Yeah. Logistic, energy, something like this. And mm -hmm. so, uh, a few times you can hear some French speaking people uh, in restaurants here in West uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And could you find a bakery or a restaurant here? Which yeah, is your well, there is this taste? bakery that I like to go to. I was more, when I lived in West with my family, we used to go more often. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called uh, Mademoiselle and Mademoiselle. they are doing uh, great stuff. I yeah, can yeah. recommend that. And uh, there's a croissant, it's okay? Yeah, it's nice, yeah. it's really nice. The bread is really good. Uh -huh. The croissant is uh, coming very close to what I experienced in France. Mm -hmm. And the pain chocolat as well, so chocolat. Uh, oh. props to them, yes. Okay, what do you do in your free time? Well, I spend a lot of time with my kids. Mm -hmm. I try to uh, go out a lot with them raining or not we try to to go out to, to go to some uh, um, yeah to some um, game playgrounds or something if it's raining we go to yatsu to the yatsu house uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> and they are oft, often uh, asking us to go there they, they like it uh -huh. a lot so going to the balaton which is uh -huh. pretty close to our place so it's a really nice area in the off season to, to uh -huh. spend time with the family there okay I saw a video about you that you are having a bus in, in Balaton Lake, mm. but uh, in February or in, or in March, for example. Could yeah. you tell something about this this uh, stuff? Because in Hungary, I think it's not so famous, this Kneipkur and this other, that this ice 
uh, bus, but uh, it's, it's of course it's a really uh, useful thing. So what is it for you? Well, for? I do believe that it has a it's beneficial for the health to mm -hmm. to go to the to the cold water mm -hmm. um, to start with a few seconds and to increase the time by. Mm -hmm. Uh, with it, with the time and with the, yeah, with the experience that you have, and mm -hmm. uh, they say it's the best to go uh, first thing in the morning to go there, and mm -hmm. you know, it reduces inflammation. Um, it's yeah, it's uh, it's beneficial for the heart rate, for uh, I don't know, for recovery, of course, for mm -hmm. the muscle uh, yeah. muscle fever or stuff like that. So. I do believe it. Uh, it helped me. It helps me as, a, as an athlete. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in this season, uh, Nadim Ramili is signed for us, and next season we will have two other French guys. What do you think about the future in West Prem? There will be a big French club here. It's and gonna be the French mafia. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what do you think, and um, uh, what's your relationship with these guys? I am looking forward to it. To be honest. Uh, yeah, during my career, um, the languages which were very common in the locker rooms were, first of all, German, of course. Then, when I moved to Hamburg and Flensburg, it became more and more Scandinav Scandinavian mm -hmm. with uh, Danish and Swedish. Yeah. When I came here, uh, yeah, the Balkan language was, I would say, more dominant in the locker room. Yeah. And next season it's going to be French, you know, because yeah. uh, Rodrigo speaks fluently and perfectly French. Dragan yeah. is half French and uh, a few guys from France are joining, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bus will be yelling with French, I think, next we season. See. We will see. Pizza or hamburger? Hamburger. Okay. Cinema or watching a movie at home? At home. Wellness or riding a bicycle? Riding the bicycle. Pool or sea? Sea. Electronic music or hip hop? Hip hop. Wine or beer? Wine. Pineapple on the pizza, yes or no? Ooh, no. <laughs> Action movie or comedy? Comedy. Okay, thank you very much. Kreisjungsebe. Okay.